Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are back at the first American Chess Congress, but this is not a part of uh, uh, the the tournament game. Uh, it's Louis Paulson versus Paul Charles Morphy. Uh, Paulson defeated his opponent uh, three to zero. Morphy also defeated his opponent three to zero. We have seen all three games, and now before waiting for the second part of the tournament, where Paulson will meet Mon Montgomery and uh, Morphy will meet uh, Judge Meek, uh, they decided to play uh, a blindfold game. Uh, it's basically a part of uh, uh, Paulson. Uh, Louis Paulson's simultaneous exhibition, he announced that he will play four opponents uh, uh, simultaneously blindfolded, which uh, in those days w was considered just uh, incredible. No one ever attempted more than uh, playing more than four people uh, in a blindfold contest. Uh, so Morphy accepted the invitation, but he said only if he plays blindfold as well. Uh, otherwise, if Morphy, if Morphy just accepted uh, to, to play against uh, uh, Paulson, where, where only Paulson was blindfolded, then if Morphy wins, he didn't really win anything, and if he loses, it would be it would be quite shameful. Uh, so uh, this is the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoy it. Uh, let's check it out. Uh, Paulson opens it with uh, e4. Uh, we have e5, uh, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now knight to c3. Going for the three knights opening, and bishop to c5 by Morphy. Of course, both players going for very rapid development. We have bishop to b5 now attacking the knight here with the idea of maybe winning the pawn. Uh, d6, uh, so the d5 pawn is nicely defended, and now d4 as the knight on c6 is pinned. So e captures on d4 by Morphy, knight captures on d4, and now bishop to d7 unpinning the knight. Uh, we have knight captures on c6, and now uh, b captures on c6, pushing uh, Paulson's bishop back. Bishop back to a4, now c4, d3, or e2 are all uh, excellent squares. However, uh, for some reason, uh, Paulson decides to bring the bishop back to a4. Uh, but okay, queen to f6, already Morphe is threatening mate here, uh, so uh, just... Uh, uh, castles here. Uh, but it's interesting to note that uh, this position uh, after this game has never been reached again. Uh, so as of move 8. Uh, we have a game that was never repeated. Uh, so castles, of course this defends against uh, any, any checkmate threats. And now knight to e7. Morphe continues development. And now uh, Paulson should definitely consider a move like bishop to b3. The bishop will be much better here on this diagonal. Or even bishop to d2, continuing with queen e2, maybe bring the rook over to e1, play king h1, f4. All very nice moves. However, he goes for bishop to e3. And this, um, uh, you know, critics have been uh, criticizing Paulson for this move uh, since since he played it. Uh, but in those days, uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, positional chess wasn't really a thing. Well, uh, maybe w maybe with Paulson and Morphy it was. Uh, but here in the blindfold game, Paulson decided that it was okay to mess up his pawn structure to get the, the semi-open uh, file for the rook. Although it would be much better if this uh, bishop was here. Then maybe bishop to e3. Uh, if the bishop retreated to c4, then maybe this idea would be okay since then you would already have uh, the f7 pawn under attack. But here, Morphy just captures it. Bishop captures an e three f captures on e3 opens up an attack to morphe's queen and now queen h6 morphe just goes after the e3 pawn uh, we have queen to d3 defending uh, but now uh, with uh, the pawns being doubled like this there's really nothing to challenge morphe's knight when it lands on e5 so knight to g6 and the knight is now coming to e5 you do not have the f pawn or the d pawn to kick it away from there uh, rook a to e1 paulson also continues with rapid development 95 just uh uh, uh, putting the knight to a nice, a nice central square. Queen back to e2, and now Morphe just castles. Uh, we have h3, taking away the g4 square from Morphe's pieces, and now king h8, preparing to bring the rook over to g8. Uh, we have knight to d1, now adding another defender here, but also preparing to remaneuver the knight via knight to f2, uh, also knight to d3. Uh, and here Morphe finds a, uh, well, uh, a really inspirational move, g5, and uh, Howard, St Howard Staunton, uh, some years after this game was played, uh, uh, said something about this move, but we're gonna get to that after we check out the game. So g5, if he wants to play g4, bust open the position, also use the uh, g file for his rook. So let's see what happens. We have knight to f2, now kind of controlling g4, although not really, if Morphe wanted to, he could push it, but first Morphe uh, prepares it, rook to g8. Uh, we have knight to d3, uh, also, instead of knight d3, maybe g4, that's not a g4, uh, maybe uh, instead of knight to d3, g4, 
uh, to prevent black from pushing g4. However, then queen to h4 is very strong. And now queen g3 check is coming followed by knight to f3. So you'd have to play something like king g2, but then h5, you again uh, will be successful in busting open uh, the king's defenses. So after rook to g8, uh, Paulson decides to go for knight to d3. Uh, and here Morphe just continues with g4. And okay, knight captures on e5 by Paulson, d captures on e5, and now h captures on g5. Bishop captures on g5 by Morphe, and now queen to f2. So here, uh, Morphe's pawns are somewhat hanging. This is hanging, this is hanging, uh, then this might be hanging, but uh, Morphe uh, doesn't really care about that. All, all Morphe cares about is that Paulson doesn't play queen g6 and uh, trades queens. So rook to g6, preventing that. Uh, and now queen captures on f7 by Paulson. Uh, and here, uh, Morphe uh, just uh, brings the bishop back to e6. Bishop to e6, attacks the queen and also frees the g square for the rook. Uh, so what do you play here? It, it's a really a bad position for white. Uh, whatever you play will not be sufficient. Uh, so Paulson decided to grab a pawn here. Queen captures on c7, uh, which uh, might uh, have queen captures on e5 with check next. Uh, but it was in this position on move 23 that Paul Morphe announced uh, a checkmate in Five. And after thinking about the position for, for some time, uh, Louis Paulson resigned the game in this position without playing uh, any, any more moves. So uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find this uh, announced mate in five that, that Morphe announced while well, I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so uh, for those of you uh, who were able to do it, congratulations. Uh, just a uh, uh, just a note, uh, it took Morphe uh, and Paulson six hours to finish this game. They played uh, from 4.30 p.m. till 10.30 p.m. And then at, at, at 10.30 p.m. Morphe announced the mate in five. So really, for those of you who found it, uh, congratulations. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's Rook captures on G2. And now with best defense, uh, White is getting mated in five. So you have to capture the Rook, King captures. And now you have two options. So either go Queen H3 or Rook to G8 check. Uh, Queen H3 is not as nice as Rook to G8 maybe, uh, because after King G1, uh, it's right away. Uh, Rook to G8 check, King F2. Uh, or you could uh, give up the queen, which will, again, uh, justify the mate in five with best defense. But you could just move the king, king f2, and now rook to g2 uh, uh, does the job uh, just the same. However, after this king captures uh, on g2, you could also go for rook to g8, check, but, and then it's a much nicer mate. King f3, queen to h5, check, not allowing the king to escape. King f2, queen to h2 with check, king f3, and now the bishop delivers mate with bishop to g4. So this is uh, uh, what well, Morphe had in mind when Paulson played queen captures on c7. And uh, of course, uh, Paulson saw all this uh, blindfold and then he, he, he just resigned the game. So really uh, a brilliant game by Morphe. Uh, Paulson uh, really gave him too much by, uh, by playing the bishop to e3 move. After that, Morphe just, uh, you know... Uh, crashed down on, on the position and he was unstoppable and uh, I mentioned that uh, Howard Staunton mentioned something about this game so here it is uh, from David Lawson's book uh, Howard Staunton made a generous comment on Morphe's manner of play uh, when he later published in his chess column in the Illustrated London News of February 1st 1862 uh, so uh, five years after this game was played the first blindfold game uh, Morphe played with Paulson. Uh, he says, In the faculty of imparting vitality to a position, Mr. Morphe is hardly second to La Bourdonnais, a uh, very famous uh, French player. Uh, it is very rare indeed to find a game uh, of his which is not in some part uh, enlivened by a stroke of vigor or a flash of inspiration. The advance of the pawn here, Morphe's move 16, operates a change in the aspect of affairs which is almost magical. So this is... Uh, uh, how Staunton uh, considered uh, uh, this game and especially Morphe's move 16. If you uh, don't remember, after knight to d1, uh, Morphe's g5. This is the move Staunton's talking about, and it really is a it, it really is a, an impressive idea. I mean, a kind of weakening your position, but not really. As Morphe uh, Morphe showed, uh, uh, <laughs> Paulson couldn't really do anything about it. Uh, but yeah, uh, out of the four uh, blindfold games in a simultaneous exhibition that uh, Paulson played, he only lost the one to Morphe, he drew one and won two. So all in all, he won his uh, blindfold exhibition match with two wins, one draw and one loss. Uh, but which is to be expected if, if you have uh, Morphe uh, as your opponent. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Um, 
like I said, six hours, uh, not, not bad for, for a blindfold game. And we are continuing uh, with the Paul Morphy saga. Uh, we, we are going into uh, the next games of the American Chess Congress, uh, where Paulson meets Montgomery and Morphy meets Judge Meek. So uh, we'll see what happens and will the two of them meet again. So yeah, uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Polak Shlomo, Jan Parr, uh, Varun uh, Varadarian, uh, Doug McNabb, and Frank Combs for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Like I said, continuing the Morphe saga, uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.